today we're going to be moving from switches to over to relays. Uh, I've briefly talked about switches and relays before this most recent series we're doing. Um, if y'all want to check that out, that is on our YouTube channel. There's uh, That one was done more with slideshows and less with actual hands-on. But there are some good, um, good pictures and things that show the circuit diagrams. So today, the relays I'm going to talk about right here, I have a standard automotive relay. It's what I'm going to use to actually show you the different parts of it and go through how it works. This is an MR101 style relay. Uh, we'll go over a little bit about the casing and mounting. That should take all of like a minute or two because it's very straightforward. And then we'll talk about how these terminals and wiring and everything work compared to this one. And then this over here is a PAM style relay. So we'll, uh, we'll talk about it a little bit as well. These are the two kind of relays we'll see most in fire alarm stuff. But this one gives an easy picture of what's going on inside of these other two. So I'm going to set those off to the side and I'm going to move the camera down. And I'm going to have to ask you all to bear with me in the autofocus. I couldn't figure out how to get the focus to lock. So the it'll kind of come and go. So to start with, I want to uh, talk about the difference between a relay and a switch. The switch has the common normally open and normally closed terminals like we've been talking about. The relay has those same terminals. It's just controlled differently. Instead of a switch being like a manual toggle like we saw me working with a few weeks ago, uh, the relay is activated by some other means. So right here, we have five pins on our relay. Um, so these three down the center are going to be your common, normally open and normally closed. And then these two on the sides are going to be the extra terminals that we have that, that make that actually power the relay and control the switching on and off. So I'm going to flip it over to show you a couple components. Right here, you'll see there's a big coil of wire, looks like a, a miniature spool. So that's going to be an electromagnet right there. Anytime you get a coil of wire wrapped around an object and then you apply power to it, it creates a magnetic field just like a, just like a regular magnet would, except for this only has the magnetic field when electricity is flowing across it. And as soon as you turn the electricity off, the, uh, the field goes away. Now the other part is right here in this corner. Let's see if I can get it to focus in. You'll see there are two contact posts coming up and then this arm that moves back and forth. This is your actual switch. It's the same way a regular switch works. The only difference is this electromagnet is going to pull this arm right here back and forth. So your different terminals, your braided wire that's coming around the side here, this is actually your common. It comes up from this post down here and it hits this back metal piece. You have this copper that wraps around right here. This is actually a piece of like spring metal that pulls back against the magnet so that it returns back to its normal state once the uh, once the electromagnet's turned off. And then this braided copper actually starts here. So you come up from your terminal, hit this piece of metal, and then attached to the same piece of metal is this braided copper. And so that's the path the electricity is taking. And that's your common because when you get over here to the switch, this is the part both sides have in common. And so over here, the side that it normally rests against, this is your normally closed. So in its resting state, that piece of spring steel or spring metal of whatever type is uh, pulling it over and holding it against this. When the electromagnet turns on, it pulls it over this way and it comes in contact with this other terminal. And so that'll this will be your normally open because you see there's that open gap between them. And then whenever you turn the electromagnet on, it leaves its resting state. And you can see the, the normally closed one open. So you can actually see the moving of the switch there as I push on it. And so that's how a toggle style switch works. That's how a light switch works. In this case, I'm just showing it to you on a relay. So half of a relay, this is called the secondary side of a relay. It's just the same thing as a switch, like what we've been talking about. Here's that top view. You can see that common terminals wrapping around and it just another view of it going between the two. So down here on the bottom, you have these two terminals here. We said this one, just in case you're trying to keep up. This one's your common. Then you have these two in the center. They can be traced up. So this outside one comes up through the plastic. It's this piece here, and it's your normally open terminal over here. 
the one that it doesn't normally rest against. The same exact thing is happening with the center one. It comes up in the bottom, maybe hard to see in there, comes over and comes up right here, and that's your normally closed. So this would be common here, normally closed in the center, and then normally open on the end. These two terminals power your electromagnet. So you have your in and your out or vice versa. Now this relay is kind of nice because it actually has that LED to tell you when it's turned on. All right, so what we're gonna be watching for, you should be able to see this LED will come on and this arm will move as I move this switch over here. And so the LED coming on is a little bit more obvious because we're out of focus. And then as it lets go, that spring steel just returns it to its state. This is all a relay is. They're fairly simple. There's not a lot to them. So this is an automotive type fuse. This isn't something we use in the fire alarm world. A regular conventional relay we will use much, much more often is the MR101 relay. Now on this one, we still have a primary and a secondary side and we have an electromagnet. We have that switching terminal. That's all happening in this black box. These other components just help regulate it and uh, help it be a multi-voltage relay. So you can see you have your numbers here at the bottom. That's a 0, 24, 115, and 230. Those are your different input voltages. Your 0 will always be your negative or your, uh, your neutral if you're working with AC voltage. And then depending on which level of voltage just determines which of those you wire to. And again, all these other components just regulate it down so that this relay can work with any of those voltages. So this is your primary side. This is the side that works with your... Uh, electromagnet. This side up here is your secondary. So you see we still have that normally closed, common, and normally open. This is just laid out in a way it gives us these nice screw terminals instead of having to do crimps and deal with the blades on the back of the relay like that automotive one I showed you. The MR101 is nice because right here this can come out, it lifts out, and uh, you can pull these off obviously but you can get to all four of those screws so you can actually mount this to the wall and it's its own self-contained deal. You don't have to get extra boxes and things. And, uh, and then the board just pops right back in. And you have a couple pre-made knockouts on it on the top and bottom. I don't know if you saw that. These screws here are for your cover. So it mounts up real nice and quick. Uh, standard half inch conduit size. And then this LED light right here lines up with this hole here so when it turns on, the idea is you can see that the relay is on or, on or off. So you can know uh, what function is supposed to be happening. A couple purposes that we have for relays. One is just like a switch, we need to turn something on and off. So we need to turn lights on and off, but we don't wanna have to go and manually do it. We want it to automatically happen. We want it to be an automated feature. That's what a relay is for. It's just an automated switch. So a way that this would work with fire alarm systems, say you're working on an older conventional system, and you're not able to use an addressable relay. Uh, so you need to you need to be able to control, say, some door lock. We'll get into door locks in a couple of weeks, but you have an electromagnet you need to turn on or off anytime it's an alarm. So what you would do is you would run the power for your door lock through your normally closed and common because you want the door to be locked all, all the time that it's in normal condition. This side, you could hook up to something like a NAC circuit, something that's gonna activate anytime there's an alarm in the building. Then when it activates, it switches this right here because that NAC circuit comes in, powers that electromagnet and turns the switch for you. So the NAC circuit's already turning on in the building. It's already happening anytime there's an alarm. And so now you're unlocking that door every time there's an alarm. The second thing relays can do for us, sometimes an electrical component will draw too much current for what a different kind of switch can hold. So in cars, this would look like car horns. You know, you've got a little switch inside your steering wheel that you push. That switch can't hold all the current that the horn draws to make the noise. So that button turns on a relay, which then allows the, uh, allows the horn to sound. Headlights in a car work the same way little switch on your dashboard can't handle the current that the headlights draw. And fire alarm smoke dampers work that way. The, the addressable relays we have, a lot of technology went into making them intelligent so we could program them and make them easy to control over the data circuit. But the contacts in them are not rated to hold really high current power. This MR101 is. So what we can do, we can use one of those addressable relays with a like a 24 volt auxiliary circuit coming through to turn on this relay as we want to but actually put the smoke dampers themselves on the secondary side of the MR101. And the MR101 
is a is a beefier relay it can handle it and then our addressable relays they work great but they're they're not very strong they don't handle very much current so the only current that it would actually be having to handle is what goes across the electromagnet in this relay which is very very little current so even the smallest and weakest of switches can handle turning on a relay like this. And then the relay takes the load of the smoke dampers. Then we have this uh, PAM style relay right here. There's lettering and wording. It tells you what the different wires do. So on this side, it tells me that my red and my white are my positive and negative. Now I have two reds and two whites. That's meant to be an in and out. If I need to go in and out, maybe like I have several of these PAM relays controlling several different things. Either red can pair to either white. They solder to the same thing internally. So it doesn't matter if you pair it this way or if you just reach over and swap the whites and go that. It doesn't matter at all. They, uh, they, they connect to the same point inside there. Just know that that's done so that you can turn it on and you can go to the next one and keep your wiring nice and neat. If you're not using both, cut off the little ends here and then tape them up individually so that they don't short or let your power ground fault or something else. But this will be your, this is your primary side of your relay is your red and white here, which again would be like these terminals down here. That's your, your voltage. This is your electromagnet side. And this side is your switch. So you have a blue, yellow, and orange. Uh, the little legend here tells me that common is blue. So we will always use the blue. And then depending on what you're switching, you'll either use the yellow, which is normally closed or the orange, which is normally open. Or does everyone understand why you would uh, why you would want to use a relay instead of a switch, or why you would use one of these conventional relays instead of an addressable relay? Uh, do you have any questions about when you would use one or the other? Yeah, I got a question. Um, I know where you were just talking about the MR one hundred and one as far as powering up the just say for instance the dampers how many can you put on that mr101 at the same time with just the relay itself how many will fit on a relay okay so a uh that that's going to depend a lot on the damper itself and how much current it's drawing i'll have to send y'all out an actual amperage rating of what our addressable relays can hold versus what this can hold i know that you can have different size dampers and they can have different current draw so depending on what the mechanical contractor, which physical part he installed, that's going to have to do with it. I think you can put a pretty good number. I want to say I did eight or nine of them in a high rise. I did, it was like eight or nine floors that they had controlled at one single point. And this, and the MR 101 was able to handle that where our, uh, our addressable relay that would have fried it before it even, you would have never known it turned on. It just would have, you know, puffed the magic dragon and all the little smoke would have come out. Okay. So when do we use that PAM relay? Or does it work just like the MR101? It's the same thing. It's just an, a different, it looks different. It's packaged different, but it's the same thing. Yeah, this one only does 24 volt and 120 volt, which is fine. We never do anything with 240, but the, the 101 can technically go up to 240, but they do the exact same thing. And this one actually tells me that it can hold, oh, that's okay. Never mind. I thought it was telling me it's amperage rating right on the side, which would have been nice. But More we don't one. Do we don't use that PAM relay for the dampers, though, correct? No, not typically. We stock these, and we typically deliver these to the jobs. We just happen to have one of these on the shelf, um, so I grabbed it so I could show it to you, too. Um, there's There was a time where I had to shut down a bunch of air, the the, the big fan. Yeah, I building. was just going to say that. <laughs> and, uh, and it was too much current for for an addressable relay. So I couldn't just run SLC from fan to fan to fan. And then, you know, have my relay up there at each one to turn it off because the fan draw drew too much current. But this PAM relay fits nicely in a little 1900 box. And I had a spare NAC circuit on a power supply. So I just ran my NAC circuit like that instead of running, instead of running SLC. And I just did like I talked about daisy chaining with these. So you had a positive and negative come into one relay, go out of it and hit the next relay and hit the next relay. And then these PAMs were able to handle the shutdown of those, those big ass fans. And so that was a time when I used these and, uh, these are pretty cheap and available at like all the, uh, all the parts warehouses we use it. And the, the electricians already had 1900 boxes in place and like, and this fits real nicely in a 1900 box with a cover plate and you just, you know, write a label on it. So that was a time when I used the PAM relay instead of the 101, but they do the exact same job. I got my paper here with the, uh, power ratings of this. So the MR100 series, which a 101 is in the 100. If you're powering it on 24 volts, so that would be this side right here, it only pulls 15 milliamps. So that's 
0.015 amp. Now, the load it can actually hold up here, if we're running it around 30 volts DC, which we would do the 24 volts, we would use the 30 volt rating, it can hold uh, 7 amps. If we're running the 120 volts AC, it can actually hold 10 amps. And I, I want to say our addressable ones are somewhere around like one and a half or two amps of what what their contacts can hold. And so this one being 10 amps, obviously, is what I'm talking about with that uh, higher current stuff. Okay. Hey, this is, I got one more question for you. Now, you said you use that pan relay for a shutdown for the big fans. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, you're white and you're red. Like you said, you took that to your NAC circuit. Yes. And then whether it's common, normal, open, or normally closed, you will end up using the other side. Yes. What are you turning it? What are you turning that other side into? Just the fan shut down part um, of it? Or in that particular case, we were having to break the 120 running the fans. It depends on how they're controlling the fans. I know sometimes they have VFDs out there and we can shut them down the exact same way we shut down air handlers, in which case the addressable relay is just fine. But in that particular case, I was having to break the 120 volt and that's why the current was higher than what the uh, what the addressable relay could hold. So I was using the uh, the common, which is blue, and the normally closed, which is yellow. And then I cut back that orange and I had to tape it off so that it wouldn't send 120 to the 1900 box or something else that I didn't want getting it. So it was these two and I would, you know, I'd have a hot come in and then it would go through the relay and the hot would go out to the fan. And so- the, Yeah, but what, what are you landing that blue, the common and the yellow onto though? The, the hot wire for the, the 120 volt is what I had to land. That this is, I gave this to the electricians and I said, you know, okay, your line okay, and your load okay. connect to this. So you just actually turned that neck into to program to where to shut off for the red and the white. Yeah, those air handler fans, um, they have to shut down under general alarm. And so it was just coming off a of power supply. All the strobes and horns, you know, they go off under general alarm. So right. it was it was switching the state of my relay every time it went into general alarm. Got you, got you. Uh, next week, I'm going to go a little bit more in-depth on elevator recall. And so I'll actually try to have a demonstration where we wire up the MR101 the way we're supposed to do that, as well as we'll have the addressable relays out as well, showing how those connect to your elevator recall stuff. Um, I'll see you all then. All right, you know, put have, a, I'm sorry, go ahead, Randy. Right, put, put another note on there for the uh, fire pump controller. Okay. I don't think we talked about that either. Okay. Yeah. I'll, uh, we'll either talk about fire pump controller sometime soon, or I'll send something out. I'll send something out about it. One of the two. Yeah. If ever, if everyone's good and ready to go, then y'all have a great week. Y'all stay safe. Um, and I'll see y'all next week.